Hey friends, welcome to Shine Coaching. Rob here with a couple of my good buddies. In this video, we're gonna talk about studying as an undergraduate, doing your bachelor's in America. We've gotten lots of great responses and messages from people requesting this, so we're gonna do a little bit of a series for that. And in this video, specifically gonna be about advice and tips for undergrads in America. We're gonna cover six things, six topics from these guys, kind of their lessons learned to help you guys be more successful here in America. <sighs> Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Surya Agarwal. Um, I'm a computer science student here at UTD. I'm still in my undergrad second year We're, uh, from the same school, Mon School Barakamba Road. Hi, I'm Arshdeep Singh. From, also from WS Visa, before, uh, computer science major, sophomore, second year, um, finishing the third semester here. So you guys are have a year of experience under your belt mm -hmm. and will be your second year. Yeah. Uh, can you believe you've been in America this long? Nah, I'm uh, still in disbelief. Yeah, I'm like, I don't even notice it anymore that I'm getting up and, oh, it's a new country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's been cool watching yeah. you guys in your journey adjust yeah. and uh, learn and be successful here. Yeah. And so Hopefully. you guys are going to have some great experience. You've been here a while, but you're still pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. right. So you're going to have some really great perspective. Let's go ahead and jump into this very first tip, um, this first topic. You guys wanted to talk about AP and IB, why is that important? Well, basically because AP exams are the colleges in America work on a credit system. Usually the courses that we learn through our high school, they come in handy uh, in finishing off the courses here. And for that, we can gain extra credit back in India. Um, you can basically do these AP exams uh, from USIEF centers, uh, I think throughout throughout India. Basically, College Board gives you yeah. the opportunity to take those. You can take these exams and they will account for extra credit in uh, later on in your college life yeah. uh, for fulfilling certain courses like it can be linear algebra and calculus and yeah. basically everything that you've gone through in your high school. Mm -hmm. You can basically skip courses and go ahead like you can skip task one and take task two in your first semester which is obviously beneficial because you don't need to repeat all the stuff that you did in class 11 and 12. Yeah. Yeah. So, AP or IB courses and credit help you save money, yeah. get ahead, uh, graduate on time, mm -hmm. graduate early. Um, so yeah, I even did that in my own undergrad. It was very helpful and knock out yeah. a few of those core basic classes. So take advantage of the AP and IB credits. Absolutely. So that's number one. Number two, you guys mentioned that it's important to research the course catalog. What does that mean and why do people need to know that? So every university has a course catalog that basically lists all the classes that you need to take in your undergrad or graduate career. So, um, uh, and it shows you what was, in, in US, uh, you need to take a few classes before taking the next class. It's called prereqs and corecs. So like Calc 1, as I said, Calc 1 needs to be taken before Calc 2. So um, the idea is that you should know what the course catalog is, what courses you have to take, not just, not the courses that you have to take in the first semester. You should know what you're going to take in the first semester. Obviously it's not rigid, you can change it around. A lot of people do that. But you should have a basic idea of what you're going to do so that you can plan out your journey uh, through the four years. Possibly add another major, minor, and some universities also have programs where you can do a master's in four years. So definitely know what you're doing as far as courses are concerned. And the younger student you are, the harder it is to get the classes you want. Yeah. You're at the bottom of the list in terms of priority for registering. Yeah, that's true. So the older you are, you know, second, third, fourth year, mm -hmm. then you get priority registering. Yeah. yeah. So it's good to have that plan ahead of knowing yeah. the direction and the order you have to do your classes in. Yeah. Um, if you just show up, you might not get those classes and that can mess you up or even Absolutely. keep you from graduating on time. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. for sure. So do that research. Arch Chief learned the hard way, right? Yeah. <laughs> we spent so much time in my first semester trying to figure out what to do, what to do, but thankfully now I know. And, yeah. But yeah, you can save a lot of time and effort if you do that beforehand. That's good. And doctor advisors, they're helpful. Yeah, use the college advisors. Yeah. They're there to help you. Yeah. All right, number three, um, you guys talked about how it's important to actually know a little bit about the topic or the course or the field of study beforehand. Talk about that. I mean, uh, coming to America, I already knew that I was interested in computer science. and I had kind of an idea of where I want to go after I graduate, but it's often that students who come from India either come uh, you know, undecided or they're not clear on what choice they want. You usually want to uh, at least concentrate or have an idea about what you want to later on do in life yeah. so that you can decide what track or major you want to take here. Right. It's Having basically. said that, the US also allows you to change your major. You can, it's not as rigid as the Indian system. Um, you can change around your majors, you can take different courses even if you're not majoring in that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I came as a physics major, I turned into, into computer science when I came here and 
Honestly, I'm really thankful that I got the opportunity to do that because if it wouldn't have been for the US system, I would have been stuck with physics. Not that I don't like physics, just would not have been as happy. <laughs> yeah, the flexibility is yeah, very important. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, but being prepared and knowing a little bit about what you're doing is also helpful. Yeah, like I wish I had known that I was going to do CS beforehand so I could have you know, done courses, probably it would have been a little bit ahead of the curve, but well, I'm here now. Yeah, so if you know what you're going to study, spend those couple of months in the summer before coming, take some courses online, read some books, do some research, and mm -hmm. get a little bit ahead, and that's going to help you because um, the American students are going to kind of have that already, especially for college. Yeah. All right, the fourth thing, uh, which is everyone's favorite, Documents and immigration. <laughs> what are some advice and tips people need to know about that? Please do them on time. <laughs> Please do them on time. Um, if you don't, it can actually cost you your admission. Yep. Um, thankfully, not we didn't face that issue, but um, no one will tell you to do these things. Like, unlike school, no one's going to be on your head that, hey, homework's due, homework's due, homework's due. If you don't do it, you're lost. So if you have an embassy in your city, definitely be in contact with them. Talk to them regularly so that you know that you're up to date with everything. Mm. Then check all the checklists that are given to you from either the university, mm -hmm. um, either the immigration website, whatever. Be on top of it. In America, the rules are strict. Yeah. Deadlines are fixed. There isn't that flexibility or grace period which might yeah. happen in other parts of the world, which I kind of miss sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, you got to plan ahead. Yeah. yeah. Last minute. Up until you know the last minute deadlines is not a good way to do your uh, application and no. study abroad process for America. For sure, do it early. <laughs> There's too many of them to work. Yeah, out. yeah, absolutely. Like I twenty F one visa, um, a lot of doc document payments to the university, everything. Passport visas. Yeah, if you don't have a passport, get one. You need it. <laughs> you need to come here. Yeah, yeah. So the next one, point number five, that these guys want to suggest is actually apply to less colleges. Mm -hmm. Share your experience and why why you suggest that. Well, basically because my it was a thing with my mother. She was a bit concerned that uh, we applied to our basic ten list of colleges that we had decided, and uh, after applying to them, you know, not hearing back for a while, it's it's normal not to hear for a while because they're going through so many applications. Right. Yeah. And yours is in somewhere down on the list. That yeah, it's a uh, eventually they'll get to you and they'll get back to you, but till then you gotta wait. And while in the waiting time, we applied to many more colleges and you know... It can be scary because it, it's, it's your life, right? It is, it, yeah, If it you is. don't reach this next step, you're done. So, um, it can be scary and that can push you to, as Surya said, apply for more colleges. But I would say I definitely applied to, I think, 16 colleges. Mm -hmm. It's not required. You can still come to one, right? And um, obviously, as an Indian student, you, you can think that maybe because it's, you're an international student, it can be hard that um, you know you might not get it or you might not get the scholarship you want. Mm -hmm. That's why you're like, okay, I'm going to expand my chances by applying to as many as possible. But I feel like that might be a waste of money and time. Yeah, when you say it's your felt great, use, it, use that time while using st studying for finals or just doing it, focusing on your college that you might get into. Yep. Um, so definitely trim down the list. Your, your college counselor might say otherwise. <laughs> Believe us, it's not required. Yeah, but yeah, they want to get those commissions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that, but don't do it. It's not required. Yeah, yeah. be focused, be a little more strategic. Yeah. Um, it'll save you just time and hassle. All right, guys, we're going to pause real quick here. And we're going to do the chai question for this video. And this chai question is, what are your top three college choices? Um, go ahead and comment below. Let us know. I'd love to see everyone's top three college choices. What was your guys' top three college choices when you applied? U T D. That's for me. <laughs> no, um, my I have I, I realistic choices. Uh, I was U T Austin. I did get into U T Austin, Georgia Tech, and U T D because I wanted state schools because they put more effort into you. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. that was, that's what I thought. And um, but yeah, I did get into all of them, but. Um, Money was the type thing, so that's why I'm here at UTD. But I'm, yeah, I'm in my top one of the top three universities that I want. So. Mm -hmm. well, the top three for me was probably uh, University of Arizona, mm -hmm. then there was uh, Texas A&M, and finally UTD. Yeah, you have awesome. to get into one of my top three choices. So yeah, well, yeah, comment below with your top three. We're going to continue with the rest of the tips. The last one, number six, focusing on scholarships. Mm -hmm. uh, why is that important? As an Indian student uh, from middle middle class family, I. My family could not have afforded spending out of state tuition in America because it's a lot. 40,000, 50,000 per semester, that's roughly 30. But it's almost 40, a crore per four years that you spend here. Almost, almost per year, you're sp spending a crore rupees per year, almost, if you add a few more things. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I could not have afforded that. Um, that's a lot of iPhones. <laughs> that is a lot of iPhones. Yep, a lot of iPhones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was not possible for my family to pay full out of state tuition, but thankfully, UTD offered us full rides based mm -hmm. on our uh, 
uh, uh, SAT scores and uh, applications. Same so, um, yeah, you can find scholarships. You just have to look in the right places. Most colleges might not give you a scholarship as an international. But if they, even if they do, it's gonna be like you're gonna need a lot of a lot of credential. Yeah, if like, money is a tight spot for you, you definitely want to look for colleges which uh, yeah. give you scholarships. And if yeah. if you're like shooting for IVs um, and like your tier one colleges, be good. You be just, good. Just or, get yeah. sixteen hundred, mm -hmm. thirty six, <laughs> every in all the SATs, ACTs. Be get a hundred on the boards. <laughs> or get ready to pay. Or get ready to pay. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to make a whole separate video on scholarships. Mm -hmm. This is really important. So we'll have a link for that uh, above and in the description. And we'll talk more about how to get scholarships, the different types of scholarships, and uh, scholarships allow these guys to come. And we're going to make some other videos too about undergrad topics, like a video for parents and concerns that parents have. We're going to compare undergraduate studies between America and India and other countries are going to compare the cost of studying here, the daily budgets and costs and finances, and some other good topics about undergrad student life. Mm -hmm. So be sure to check those out. All right, guys, this was so helpful. Thank you, Suri and Arshdeep, for sharing your experience. These are these tips are going to really guide people to be successful here in America. Um, but make sure you don't miss out on other videos. They're going to be really helpful for you, whether you're undergrad or master's studying here in the US. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. These guys were helpful. Give them a big like, thumbs up. And yeah, leave some comments with other questions and connect with us online on social media, on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. We'd love to connect more and help you guys on your journey here. Uh, we'll see you next time at Shine Coaching. Cheers.